guys, welcome to episode 17 of the regular edition of Roll with the Fox. Now this is how I deal with a guy that's really flexible as in the very guard. I will start punching his calf and it accidentally may go into his face. I'm pretty sure that I could pass his guard easily. What's up guys? So we have a full program today guys. What I usually do, I start out with some things that uh, we did not answer last time or we've gotten some written questions, but as you know, live questions get preference. So they always, we always, so start asking away guys. Let's go over a clarification. Somebody had a, last episode we talked about when Khabib locks up the legs and starts punching. So, you know, obviously you gotta protect your face first and try to get at least one leg out. Now the question was, clarification, what if he locks up his legs the other way? What happens is, uh, this doesn't really make sense for him just because right now he's much more uh, unstable, so his legs tend to be a little bit narrower so that he's more vulnerable to, um, to being rolled over or at least rocked, which will allow you to escape. So the lockup that he uses, obviously, is extremely effective, will be sort of one that gives him chance, you know, gives him a good base. And, oh, oh, are we going there? Yeah. All right, that's okay, don't, don't worry. We got, we got a full half an hour for me to come back. All right, so that's a clarification from last time, guys. Um, again, the escape, if, if it were to happen, you can at the very least rock him, but the escape would be the same way. Um, if we don't have any questions, because I'm sure things are still coming in, Mike. Right now, everybody's excited to see you guys again. Oh, yeah, guys, this, this reminds me. I'm excited to not see you, but feel that you talk are... To you. Well, <laughs> or talk to you and feel that you're there. Um, guys, as you know, we said we're going to go to uh, weekly. Once we reach 10,000 subscribers, uh, I think we're about 1,500 away, which... Uh, by my calculation, I think by springtime, we're going to go to weekly. So I'm actually looking forward to it. I know it's going to be an extra extra work, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, let's go over another question, all right, um, that we got in writing. Uh, again, this is from Jared Kirby. And what is my favorite uh, way uh, for a takedown or guard pull to get into, into the split guard or perpendicular guard? If you've been watching for a while or if you bought the DVDs, you know those are my two favorite guards because they're extremely uh, hard to deal with once, once I'm there. The entry is not the easiest. You have to drill, guys. You will not get things overnight. Um, I will. Th those are two very effective guards because there's a lot of submissions you can threaten from there. So let's look at the uh, split guard. Uh, guys, my philosophy standing is... I, don't, I will try to take the guy down, but it depends. I don't want to be standing on my feet for three minutes, especially uh, in, in the gi. If you got a guy that's a high, high-level judoka, which we have at Henzo Gracie Academy, the main academy in, in New York, a lot of guys with good judo. So I will, I will try to take them down, but once they set their grips, I'm pulling because the, the, the one thing that you want to avoid is just flying through the air with head you know, first thing into the – into the mat and obviously that's not good because it you know hopefully you tuck in and, and roll and all this other stuff but anyways so I will try to take Enrique down but at some point um, actually this reminds me of a story a friend of mine <laughs> ultra heavy Nogi World brown belt two years ago in the finals he goes against a guy that's my friend is 260 280 the other guy is over 300 so basically it was like two elephants pushing each other and the referee at the end of the match basically like looked at them and was like, just raised the other guy's hand. So last year, not 2020, 2019, Nogi Worlds, I told him, and literally this is the first one I've showed him. I don't think he's ever seen this, this particular sequence in the warm-up area. Same guy he went against in the semifinals. Now they're at black belt. He literally hit this. He got a 30-second submission right off this. And bronze medal, Nogi Worlds. Black belt masters, excellent accomplishment. So this is the, so anyways, 
When I'm trying to tie, tie up with a guy and I, I'm having a hard time getting good grips, getting to his legs, getting something going, um, what I'll do is, is I'll sh sh kind of move my shoulder forward, so um, in and forward, so I can get a sort of, you know now this is sort of one half of Urekatami grip, all right? So I'll get this inside, and now this is very important. My back leg is gonna go on his hip, and I stretch. A lot of times you get a, a submission right off this, or worst case scenario, if you have a good angle, you get a takedown, reversal, and a submission. Uh, it works very well. Um, the key is to make sure your grip is good and the angle is good when you go down. So you're aiming for not a lined up angle, but somewhat perpendicular. Okay, the more perpendicular you can get, the better it's gonna be. So again, um, I'd advocate this for guys who don't have good takedowns, or guys even if they have good takedowns, but their takedowns are neutralized by the other guy. Where you have two guys that are both good wrestlers, but just cannot, just constantly checking in and, and neutralizing each other, and nothing is happening. So again, I'm clinched up, I'm trying to get to his legs, I can't, so I swim my shoulder in. In, now. The back foot goes on the hip. I pull him forward. Straight into an Udikatame. Upside down arm lock. It's one of my favorite. Uh, for a perpendicular guard, I use slightly different pull. Um, so, again guys, you gotta be careful when you pull guard. Uh, you know, some Guard jumping, some tournaments ban it, some, some ban it, some schools ban jumping guard, it could be very dangerous. So if you're gonna pull, I like to always put my foot on the hip. Just in case if it doesn't go as according to plan, at least I have him in guard. So I don't just pull guard, I pull guard in a way to almost hit a submission or go straight into a submission sequence, but the foot on the hip kind of protects you against it going not exactly according to plan and hopefully you just at least pull guard. So maybe I, now this time I have a clinch up on the other side, and again, I'm gonna put the back leg on the hip as I'm pulling. As he's coming forward, I'm letting the leg slip, okay? And what do we got here? Huh. So similar setup, believe it or not, I will pull perpendicular guard on my right side and I will pull split guard on my left, okay? Just so you know, we had this debate before, Oregatame attack is a form of split guard, right? One arm in, head in, arm out, okay? Now, so let's go over one more time over the perpendicular guard pull. So this time, I'm clinched up on the other side, we're pushing, and I'm gonna put my foot on the hip. As I'm pulling, I go perpendicular. If I lose the arm, there is no problem. I will lock up a reverse triangle, and if you've been watching, you know there's very difficult to escape, and there's a lot of associated follow-ups or secondary submissions you can do from there. So that's, those are my two favorite ways to get the to get the fight to, uh, to the ground. I encourage you to work your takedowns, uh, but also be careful. Again, you know, there's no point in if you, you know, if you're not drilling, but if you go live and you're dancing for four minutes, um, either nothing's gonna happen, or at some point somebody's gonna fly. So I'd rather make sure that, you know, I will try in a, in a, in a, in a competition or a fight, I would try for, you know, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then let's get it to the ground. Um, do we have any questions so far, Mike? Because I, no, I, I have a bunch of questions from that people sent me. And We actually have a few questions. Uh, one nice. that's related to this, uh, Max is asking, hey, Fox and Friends, do you have a way to reset or get the angle back when you fail to get on the side on the initial pull or when the 
or when the opponent squares your shoulders back. Cheers from Tokyo. Do you understand what the question is? So, go ahead. So, in this case, again, so I failed to hit the sub, but I got it to the ground, so now I will, you know, I will start to play guard whatever, you know, whatever form of guard I will choose. But again, the question was, how do I get it to the ground? So if I fail with the immediate attack, it's okay. Like I said, I'll keep the foot on the hip, which prevents him from coming forward and taking advantage of, of my guard pull. Again, you don't want to pull guard where you bring the guy right into a passing position or, or into a mounted position. If you pull guard, it's, it's, you gotta make sure that's either you immediately are in a position to attack with a submission or a sweep from that, or worst case scenario, at least have him somewhat stretched out where, you know, okay, he may have to recompose himself, but he's still in your guard. I hope that answers your question. And a lot of peer says, happy birthday, Enrique. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, <I'll> <laughs> And a question from Paragon of Growth is, what are the best ways to stand up from guard, uh, half guard, and side control for MMA? Okay, yeah, I, I got this question, and again, uh, it, it goes with your philosophy. Uh, I think my, 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 my game is very jiu-jitsu-centric, which means I feel very comfortable on the bottom. Um, the point is, if you don't feel comfortable on the bottom, you should look to MMA coaches that try to focus on stand-up and counter jiu-jitsu. I teach pro jiu-jitsu, not counter jiu-jitsu. So do you understand that? So I rarely teach my guys how to get up because I'm fairly confident in their abilities on the ground. I've had, you know, I have professional fighters that, that that's uh, as students, and even if they get on the bottom and I have one specific in mind. Most, most of my students know who, they, who I'm talking about. The guy's got good takedowns. He winds up getting on top and then he'll do something stupid from the top. He doesn't set up the, the submission properly. Maybe he goes for a knee bar or something else. Winds up on the bottom and almost there's no damage, threatens the guy on top and then eventually can get up. So again, I would encourage you to look at more at MMA coaches, how to stand up, pure MMA coaches, not just pure jiu-jitsu coaches. Like I said, um, a lot of people that have an amazing stand-up fighter and where their jiu-jitsu is rudimentary and they want them to fight MMA, they will teach counter jiu-jitsu. I don't teach counter jiu-jitsu, I teach pro jiu-jitsu. So if, if, if I'm on the, on the bottom, what I'm teaching my fighters is to, is to basically get into perpendicular guard or split guard where it's very difficult for the guy to hit me. Uh, if I'm here, guys, I'm not trying to get up. I'm not trying to stand up. You know, obviously, if I'm trying to stand up, uh, you know, it's, it's that's sort of the old technical stand up that you talk, you know, first day. That would be the way that I would, you know, I would uh, teach people to stand up. But if you want sort of more involved uh, sort of way to stand up, uh, because if the guy got you down and his takedowns are good, uh, you know, if you screw up the stand up portion, sometimes you put yourself even in a worse position, meaning with the guy taking you back. And Jack741 is asking, what's your counter to someone entering guard passing with a straight hamstring? Standing? This one? So he's asking for me? Yeah, but I put my shin on the same side hamstring. Gotcha. Gotcha. You have to off balance. Anytime, first of all, you know, now it's, it's you know, Enrique is in a passing mode. It's just, I got him a little too deep. I need to off balance before that happens. But so, okay. So if, if, uh, if, if the guy is here and 
this is I clearly screwed up. Right now I have zero grips and Rika has three. One, two, three. So the point is, it's it's you already screwed up here. You should not let it get happen to this point. But if if uh, if um, if I'm in this position, I, what I'm going to try to do is get my free leg. This one's not as mobile, all right, as my right leg. So what I would try to do is get my free leg. So he's pushing it down, so I can't really uh, I can't really get it to the hip. So I might be able to. This is all I need. You need to work your off balancing. I think people, uh, especially um, from the guard, uh, have a don't don't train enough off balancing. Uh, especially if your opponent has momentum and if they're the ones kind of just threatening you, and you're just kind of like going from one guard pass defense to another. Uh, you have to make sure that you start to, at some point, you need to off-balance it. You really need to off-balance it because that's off-balance when they stumble. That's your opportunity to sort of take the momentum away from them. All right? Very, very important. So depending on, on, on the positioning, again, let's, let's go with this one. Yeah, this, I, you screwed up here. Like literally, you have no grips. What I would try to do is, I, I at this point he's gonna, I know he's gonna sh shove me to, to my, so I, I'll try to just go to the head, because that's the only thing right now that's kind of available. Uh, what I would try to do, I don't wanna go too deep here, because then he, it's, it's gonna make his job easier. So I will certainly try to move my leg, but get to the head, and now I might have some things. Now I start to make things happen, all right? But off balancing is very, very important. Thing. The other thing that I recommend um, is, uh, and, and this is not a good policy in tournaments, okay? Because um, in tournaments, if you give up a guard pass, that's point to the top guy. However, uh, if you're looking at it purely from just sort of just getting back in the game, if I'm gonna get guard passed, and I kind of know it, it's you, you. You know it if you've been training long enough. I know my guard is gonna get passed. It, you just feel it that the, the guy's just you just he's wearing you down, and at some point it's gonna happen. Then I'm gonna try to make it happen on my terms, meaning that as soon as he gets through the guard, I'm attacking where I may get a possible submission from the bottom, or at the very least, put him back in my guard now with hopefully some better grips that I can utilize to attack. So let's, the, the idea, and I would, you know, I, I'm sure it's covered in one of the one of the episodes. Guys, by the way, Adolfo Foronda <laughs> has made a, made a, a, um, a Google uh, spreadsheet. Sp spreadsheet, which has, I don't know, I know it has, I think, all the daily ones we did during the lockdown, which was the antivirus edition episodes, but it has other videos I've done, whether it was f with Fear House and TriStar Gym Channel, or it's on our, Silver Fox BJJ channel. Subscribe, guys, by the way. Um, because if you subscribe, you can ask questions live. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Spreadsheet. Oh, spreadsheet, yes. There's an index of all the techniques covered in uh, its catalog. I, I believe it's posted under episode 50. Or if you can't find it, guys, I hope I don't get 1,800 messages from this. But Or you can send me a mes message. I'll send you the link. Or Mike. Mike, Mike is even better. <laughs> episode 50 guys <laughs> episode 50 so again so Enrique is, is passing and I'm just you know and I know this is going to happen so I will just attack this so you know I kind of just as he's fighting I just let it go and I'm looking for the arm bar he prevailed and now I have much better chance of getting, making something happen alright so again if you've been watching me for a while, you know that my style of jiu-jitsu, I call it fluid BJJ. It's heavily submission oriented, but also I'm a fan of kind of utilizing what the opponent gives me. I don't want to play this kind of game. I'm not that big to have that style of game. Uh, I prefer a style of game almost util taking opponents, mis making the opponent make a mistake and taking that mistake and turning into a submission for me. 
Gilbert Lopez is asking, when I do the De La Hiva position, the opponent turns their foot out and I feel too much tension on my knee. How do you prevent a uh, knee injury? Oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing is, when you, when you play De La Hiva, uh, a lot of people kind of play with the, with the knee up. This is, first of all, that's going to put a lot more tension and makes you vulnerable to a to backstep knee bar. So when you play De La Hiva, it's very important for you to point your knee towards the wall. So even if Enrique flares out, it doesn't cause injury. And now if still pointing at the wall, right? If Enrique backsteps into a into a knee bar, it's just not there. Quite contrary, it's a sweep for me. Okay? So when you play De La Hiva, it's important to train in a way that your knee is not pointing at the ceiling. That's when, when the guy backsteps, that's when that, you know, torque happens and, you know, you might yelp out in pain and adjust and now, or feel the pain and adjust and now he's passing your guard. So I actually like De La Hiva guard quite a, quite a bit. And um, like I said, you gotta pay, make sure that um, the knee points towards, towards the wall. Again, so especially especially if I weave it all the way through, this is like literally giving them giving me the knee bar, okay? But if I weave through and I'm facing towards, oh yeah, <laughs> okay. So very important to uh, to make sure that guys, uh, a, a jujitsu is a game of details. You know, when you first start out, white blue belt, you know. Uh, your game may not be as precise as, it'll never be precise enough. You always want to make it more precise, better timing. But small details can make a massive difference, both in terms of um, your ability to, to, to get a submission or get a sweep on the other guy, and also less likely of, uh, li likelihood of injury. Uh, <laughs> Kevo Locks is asking, if you could show how to take the back from a smash and pass, uh, smash and passing half guard. Technique or attacking? Attacking or? Sounds like attacking, but we can wait for him to clarify. Fuck smash. <laughs> I, I don't tend to smash. <laughs> smash. So, I mean, you gotta put me in half guard. So, yeah, this one I would probably go for a um, for a roll, but uh, it I some people may not be comfortable. To be honest, see if I'm smashing and I'm in half guard, I'm gonna try to 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 move forward. All right, because uh, even if I if I manage to roll, you know. Sometimes it can go awry, so I, I'm not necessarily, I, I, I play with this, uh, but uh, I don't advocate that for everybody because, uh, you know, if you have somebody that's good or you, and you cut it somewhat, somewhat off angle, he can counter taking your back. But if I'm, if I'm on top smashing, <laughs> I, I, I would try to, I don't think you can get it. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't think you can get it. This is probably what I would do. Yeah, yeah you get this. So if I'm smashing, uh, if my knee is out, you have a much better chance. But I'm assuming that that's what you meant. If I'm smashing, I'm, chances are I'm going to that side. And GM Baseball is asking, I still have problems controlling a guy aggressively pushing my shoulders and hand fighting and posturing up in the guard. Do I wait until he tries to stand and then seek to off-balance him at that point? Absolutely not. So, um, so if he's in my guard, you have to, you have to fight. You have to, you know, sometimes just this. Now things got very different, hip heist. Okay, so you have to grip fight. You can't just sort of let him, st if you let him stand up, 
he's a, now he's a step ahead. What I would try to do is, is now, now I would let go of my guard before he actually opens it. And I would try to attack with possibly a knee bar. I would, I would invert under, but I don't, if, if he's down on his knees, I would like to keep him on his knees. Okay? Um, grip fight. Okay? You have his legs, you have his arms, and you have his head. So don't forget that if you can't get through to one, so if I'm having trouble, you, you can go under the leg. Okay? Um, uh, sometimes you can get the head, but if he's, if he's doing a good job, his hands, yeah, his hands are constantly going to be on your torso. If that happens, I will, I will hip heist. This is a very, very, if you have somebody that you have a hard time getting something going from the guard, this is a great way to, to get something going. So obviously I have a Kimura here, but let's, let's assume that he pushes me, he gets me back down. Now I have, you know, now things start to happen for me. You know, at least I can sort of start to attack uh, the arm. So sometimes you have to do a little more than just to grab and get a grip. But you have to grip fight. You can't just sort of let him stand up. Once he stands up, he's dictating the pace, he's dictating the momentum, and now you're reacting to him. If the guy stands up, I immediately open my guard and I start attacking the leg. And Engsberg is asking, when trying to get the top lock from perpendicular guard, often I can get my knee to their head, but they grab that leg so I can't lock up the top lock. Should I try the pendulum sweep again? You understand? All right, which, which leg is going to be better for me? <laughs> <laughs> so if this happens, right, I have to control his head. Because right now my legs my legs are not in a position to control his posture, so I I always reinforce this with my hand. Right now, what I would try to do is is get rid of it. So right now I'm controlling his posture. So even if he holds on tight, and I have guys that actually will do this quite often. So there's come a couple of different strategies you can do to control it. Yeah. So what I'm going to be looking for is to bring it. Notice that I'm controlling his posture better because he's holding on. So if I, if I let him to stay here, he can posture up quite high. So if I take it out, now his posture gets low, and I'm looking for a reverse triangle. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, in the absence, if I can't get the re reverse triangle, I will try to swim under his arm. Anything that opens him up. Okay. So... You have to make sure uh, that you swim that leg, get rid of the grip. It's easier said, uh, said than done. But understand that when he's posting on your leg, if you keep the leg in front of him, he can post on it and have good posture. When you stretch it out, his posture naturally breaks. So you can take advantage of that movement. It's not necessarily the easiest thing. You have to, so break his posture, make sure you reinforce it with your hand holding onto your shin, and then try to swim out the, free, uh, the leg that he's trying to pin down to a reverse triangle. That's usually where I, I want to wind up with. There's a couple other sort of in-betweens where, let's, let's, let's look at it again. So first thing I reinforce to make sure I control the head and arm, right? Now, if I keep it close, he, he, he can basically kind of rest on it. So I put it out far. If I can lock up right away, I will. Sometimes I will try to bring it in, see if I can go under the arm. If I go under the arm, this is done. But it's, it's going to be a little bit of a battle. But again, the first thing you do, make sure you reinforce the shin to make sure you control his posture. Second thing I will do is, is try to swim it out sometimes you may have to kick and once i lock it up that this is done yes so i hope that that helps you out with uh sort of some of the uh 
troubles that you may have there. And Clint Crank BJJ says, props for deciphering these riddles, a.k.a. questions. <laughs> um, if we don't have anything real quick. Uh, guys, there was a one question, and this is very, very important concept. This is from uh, Michael Rainieri. Um, the question was, uh, I'm on top of side control, and I have a hard time uh, getting, the, get, getting the Kimura, okay? Where I can, for whatever reason, the guy's just too strong. And how do I get from here um, into, uh, into uh, uh, guillotine or anacondas? I don't. Uh, it's very important for you to understand you have to make sure you have the appropriate tool for the appropriate job. So if I can't get the guy, if I were to bait him to come to, yeah, yeah I don't want to have this. Go, go back. So I don't want to bait him. The re-grip is too much. My hands kind of, when you go for a Kimura trap, to some extent your hands, even though, you know, it's easy, but to let go, once the guy starts moving, especially if he pins your arm, now it's not that easy. To go here, it just takes too much time. We just keep going. We just keep going. <laughs> yes. So, again, the follow-up that is appropriate, in my mind at least, is when I'm, ha when I'm sitting here and I... I have a good Kimura grip, but I, I can't get his arm behind his back. Maybe he's too strong holding on to his grip, uh, holding on to the gi. It's, I'll either put the scissor choke, which we covered in one of the episodes, but most likely I will just step over. And now this is gonna be this is gonna go. I know that. Even if the guy's strong. So I would switch from the Kimura, because it doesn't require me to re-grip. Okay? Uh, I I'm a fan of least amount of regripping. I personally, you know, I know there's some high level guys, but if you got somebody that trains jujitsu six hours a day, playing with, you know, here's my gi, put it on my teeth, feed it to the other arm, weave it under his leg, feed it to the other arm, spin around. Guess what? If you're training seven days a week, six hours a day, you can pull that off. If you don't, Anytime you re-grip, there's a chance that either you, you don't get the next grip quite as well as you thought you would, or the guy feels that opening and busts through it into freedom. So I'm not a fan. I, I'm a fan of the least amount of re-gripping. When I train, my game appears very, very fast. I, I'm not quite sure if it's fast. Well, no, it can be fast. Uh, but it's more efficiency of movement. The least amount of movement the least amount of regripping, because every time you regrip, there's a chance for a mistake. So again, with the with the Kimura attack, this is pro in my mind, it's either scissor choke, if I can't get his 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 hand open, or armbar. And uh, last question, Max is saying, "Hi from Italy, Fox and guys. Could you explain why you use the back of the hand to control the head and not the palm? Thank you." Uh, you can experiment. It's just purely experimentation. Um, for some reason, um, so I, I will hold on to to with my with my palm. But I, so if I hold on, for some reason, I'm using more of my wrist when I when I hold with my palm. All right. So even even if I hold exactly the same spot, it starts to slip. Whereas with my, I'm kind of curling my, my hand, and I'm, it's more of my whole arm is engaged, my shoulder, versus here, where I tend to use, you know, depend very heavily on my wrist, and it's so, swim out. No, no, just swim out. Swim out. <laughs> Swimming. Swim, swim harder. Whereas this is a little bit harder because my hand is kind of curled. Um, you can play around with it, but I can tell you that it works. It's very, very, very hard to break the posture when you use the sort of almost the forearm and the back of the hand kind of cross. But you can use both. I usually, especially with the gi, I will hold on to the gi the minute I feel like he's going to make a big effort to, to try to posture up. I just turn it up. So it's, it's, this is very easy movement to make. Like, wait. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, Runway model. And we're out of time, guys. <laughs> 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 Are the queen. Queen of England. Uh, 
no more questions. We're out of time. Excellent. All right, guys, we'll see you for episode uh, 18, which is going to be March 5th, unless we get to 10,000 by then. But I, I think it's going to be April, May before we do. Um, and, guys, again, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Follow. Like, share, follow, friend us. Just don't stalk us. <laughs> <laughs> and, guys, if you watch the uh, BJJ Fanatics DVD, leave a review, especially the guillotine one. Yes, I guys, I appreciate it. I couldn't look right after that. <laughs> <laughs> I truly felt bad for Enrique. But anyways, guys, I'll see you next time, all right? Stay well.